So uh, yesterday, you know, we, uh, we voted on um, uh, some proposals. Uh, they were safety related and then they were all the instant replay proposals. Um, in the safety related ones, we, we passed uh, Baltimore's proposal on the pushing of the teammates on, on, uh, on punts. Uh, we extended the defenseless receiver protection. That was plan rule proposal 19. Um, we passed Miami's peelback uh, rule, which makes basically peelback blocks illegal everywhere on the field. Uh, and so we, we, and we uh, eliminated one of the elements of uh, the uh, legal chop block. So we did that yesterday. Today, we went in and we voted on Chicago's overtime proposal, which was to ensure that uh, both teams have one possession, and that was that was voted down. Uh, we uh, vo voted on the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct being a carryover foul, so that means it could carry over to the second half, or it could carry over to uh, overtime, and that passed. Uh, we voted on uh, linebackers being able to wear uh, in the 40s uh, because we were out of jersey numbers, and that passed. We also voted on the illegal formation uh, rule that would say that if you are uh, an eligible player with an eligible number and you're going to be declared ineligible, you must line up uh, in, in the uh, tackle box, and that passed. Um, so those all passed this morning. Uh, we tabled Washington's proposal on the um, uh, one-cut roster reduction uh, to be voted on in May. Uh, we uh, voted on Philadelphia's proposal of testing the college players and the idea that if you go to the combine, then you cannot work out at the local um, workout conducted by the team. That proposal failed. Uh, and then we uh, passed two uh, bylaw proposals that were uh, dealing with uh, designated for return uh, from uh, injured reserve and the fact that you can now do that on Sunday after you've cut to 53 as opposed to Tuesday. We did that to protect the uh, Thursday night teams. And we did the same thing really with our PUP rule. Uh, that's players that are physically unable to perform. They are on our roster for six weeks. They now have uh, an additional time to practice uh, just for safety purposes. We felt like we needed to do that. Indianapolis's roof proposal uh, that would allow them uh, and others uh, that have retractable roofs to open at halftime passed 32-0. Uh, so that is everything that we voted on today. We did not vote on the extra point. Uh, that proposal was made by New England. Uh, plan proposal number 14, uh, we did have about a 30 to 40 minute probably discussion on the extra point uh, and uh, very interesting uh, and lively uh, discussion with a lot of ideas, uh, clearly positive in support of making a change. Um, and I think in the next 30 days you will um, see the competition committee uh, in conjunction with a lot of coaches develop a couple of alternatives and be ready to uh, put something forward for uh, potentially a vote in May. Uh, the alternatives being discussed today were um, all over the place, but, but some very consistent. Uh, the idea of moving the, uh, the extra point to the one and a half as opposed to the one yard line, uh, incentivizing people to go for two. Uh, I think all teams pretty much said the same thing. It's time to make this play a football play. Uh, and uh, the way to make it a football play is number one, allow the defense to score. So really adopt the college procedure that says that, you know, if you block a kick or if, or if you stop a two-point play and, and the defense happens to get control of the football, that they can score and score two points. Um, I think there was a lot of consensus to the idea of the alternative, that being move the, move the ball to the one and a half or kick from the 15. You make the choice, one point for, for kicking and obviously two, two points for going for two. Um, but it was, a, it was a very good discussion. I think there's clear sentiment that uh, there's a, a uh, movement to uh, want to change and want to change this year. And the charge, I think, to us uh, as a competition committee was come back with a recommended um, proposal, do it in the next 30 days, and, and uh, give everybody a chance uh, to look at it and vote on it in, uh, in May. Rich, was there any discussion of eliminating the, uh, the kick uh, for PAT at all and just having to go for play, and also any discussion of the uh, goalposts being brought in more? Both. Uh, the answer is both. There were a couple coaches that said uh, that they would favor the idea of eliminating the PAT, just line the ball up on the two uh, and make it a, a two-point play. Uh, and there were uh, plenty of, of teams that brought up the idea of maybe it's time to narrow the goalposts. Uh, 
remember when you narrow the goal post, you're not just affecting the extra point. Uh, clearly, you're, you're going to affect field goals more than you're going to affect the extra point. You might not even move the needle on the extra point uh, by, uh, by narrowing it unless you narrow it and move back. Uh, but there was a discussion of narrowing the goalposts. Rich, so do you, do you expect the competition committee to have a, a single proposal on the extra point by the May meeting? Yes, I, I think that would be the object. Uh, it, we could end up with alternatives, but I think that the object would be to take the coaches' feedback today. We literally recorded every single team's ideas, work them through, understand all the unintended consequences, come up with a proposal, share it with all the teams, share it with the coaches, and then, and then put something forward when we get to May. Uh, Rich, uh, with the ineligible receiver rule, if you, if you do not comply, you say that's a, a penalty. Is that, what is that, procedure? What is that penalty? It's a great question. Uh, <laughs> a substitu so okay. it's a substitution foul. Good. Anything else for Rich? Ben? Yeah, yeah. There might be unintended consequences about the punt formations. And also, um, when the Patriots used it, Shane Vereen, the ineligible player, was technically the tackle, and he was out. How, how do you define tackle box? So we actually define tackle box in, in the, uh, I think it's in the rule itself, and, and so it, it's defined as the traditional tackle box, tackle to tackle, and so I think, I think we use it. We've done that in the rule book uh, itself uh, is where we say that, uh, for instance, when you, when you look at uh, intentional grounding, we talk about the traditional tackle box, same idea in this concept. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Jason, yes. <laughs> well, wait, uh, clear, can you clarify what you mean by that? Because, I mean, you can change splits and do all sorts of things to widen it. I mean, is there a distance from the center that you're defining the tackle box? Sure. What are you I'll, saying? I'll let uh, Dean, who is, yes. <laughs> Let's try to stay out of this one. It's, um, it's a normal tight split, so you couldn't basically think about the core of the formation. That's where the player has to be if he's going to report as ineligible with the eligible number. So it's your traditional tight split. You couldn't be flexed, so more than two yards outside the, the next interior lineman. So that, that's how we define it. 